our problem tells us that when 1.125 grams of a liquid hydrocarbon, CXHY, so we don't know how many C's and H's they are, so it's a mystery liquid hydrocarbon, was burned in an apparatus like that shown in figure 4.7. This is the apparatus. This is our mystery hydrocarbon getting burned, or it's combusting with oxygen. You need oxygen for the combustion to occur. So when it burns in this apparatus, and it burns with oxygen, it tells us, and we have 1.125 of it to start with, it tells us that 3.447 grams of carbon dioxide and 1.647 grams of water were produced. So let me write that reaction right there. So let me just write this first sentence right here. Write all of the information that they're giving us that they're giving us in that first sentence. They're saying that when we start off with that liquid hydrocarbon that has XCs and YHs in it, and it's in its liquid state, they say it's a liquid hydrocarbon, and when we combust it using oxygen, using oxygen in its gaseous state, we will produce carbon dioxide, we will produce carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide and water. And you can't even really realistically balance this equation because you don't know how many carbons and hydrogens you have on the left-hand side. But what they do tell us is how many grams of everything, of at least this we start with, and how many of the grams of each of these we end up with. And we're assuming that we have an excess of oxygen, that this hydrocarbon is the limiting reactant. Limiting reactant. We just have an abundance of oxygen, just enough oxygen to burn, to turn all of this hydrocarbon, to combust all of it into carbon dioxide and water. And they tell us that we have 1.125 grams of the mystery substance, and then it produces 3.447 grams of carbon dioxide and 1.647 grams of, of water. Now, to solve this, well, let me finish reading the problem. They tell us in a separate reaction, or in a separate experiment, the molar mass of the compound was found to be 86.2 grams per mole. So I'll write that down here. So C, X, H, Y, molar mass is equal to, let me write it this way instead, just to go with the convention that I've been doing. We have 86. 86.2 grams of our mystery substance, CXHY, per mole of our mystery substance, CXHY. And then they're asking us in this problem, they say, determine the empirical and molecular formulas for the unknown hydrocarbon, CXHY. Em just as a refresher, empirical means just the simplest whole number ratio of the of the atoms in our molecule. So the simplest ratio of our carbons to hydrogens or hydrogens to carbons will give us the empirical formula. The molecular formula is how many carbons, exactly how many carbons and hydrogens do we have in each atom? And I suspect we're going to be able to use this information to come up once we have the empirical formulation, the empirical formula, we then can use this molar mass right here to figure out the actual molecular formula. But let's figure out the empirical formula first. And the way we can do it is we can say, well, gee, how many moles of carbon dioxide do we get produced? How many moles of hydrogen? And then we can say, well, in the final product, how many moles of carbon do we have then? And how many moles of hydrogen then we, do we have there? And then we can figure out the ratio. And the ratio of carbons to hydrogens or hydrogens to carbons in the product, that's going to have to be the same as the ratio in the reactants. And they all came from this reactant right there. They didn't come from the water. And then hopefully we'll be able to figure out what kind of the simplest whole number ratio of hydrogens to carbons or carbons to hydrogen is. That sounds very complicated, I think. But I think if we take it step by step, it won't be too bad. So a good place to start, let's figure out how many moles of each of these substances we have. I'll start off with the carbon dioxide. So if I start off with the carbon dioxide, what is the molar mass of carbon dioxide? So it's atomic, it's atomic weight. Carbon is 12 plus, you have two oxygen, so 2 times 
The atomic weight of oxygen is 16. You could look that up if you like. But that's equal to 44 atomic mass units. That's its atomic weight, which is you know the weighted average of all of the isotopes and all of that business. But if you have a whole mole of carbon dioxide, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of these molecules, then you're going to have 44 grams of the substance. So we have 44 grams of CO2 per mole, per mole of CO2. And if we want to figure out how many moles we have at a, you know, with us, we know that we're starting off with, we know that we're starting off with 3.447 grams of CO2. And we want to multiply this by something that has grams of CO2 in the denominator. So we want to multiply it by something that looks like this. That looks like, and we want to turn it into moles of CO2. So it should have moles of CO2 over grams of CO2. Well, that's the complete. That's the inverse of this right here. This is grams per mole. We want moles per gram. So if it's, instead of 44 grams per mole, we have one over 44 moles per gram. Or for every 44 grams, we have one mole. For every one mole, we have 44 grams. I just inverted this. So let's multiply. Uh, let's multiply the grams of CO2. Cancel out with the grams of CO2. And you are left with 3.447 divided by 44. So let me, let's figure out what that is. Let's figure out what that is. So you have 3.447 divided by 44, which is equal to 0 0.7834. So 7834, let me remember that. So that is 0 0.07834 moles of CO2. That's our only units left, moles of CO2. Now let's figure out how many moles of water we have. So I can do the exact same thing over, well, let's see, where should I do that? Let me, let me write it over here. So let's do the water in orange right here. So we're starting off with 1.647 grams of H2O. And what's water's what is water's molar mass? Same argument. Its atomic mass is you, each hydrogen is 1, but you have two of them. So it's 2 times 1 plus 16, which is the atomic weight of oxygen. So 2 times 1 plus 16 is 18. That's also its molar mass. So you could say 18, 18 grams of H2O per mole of H2O. Now, to convert this, the amount of grams we have, to moles, what we want to do is multiply it by something that has, that has moles in the numerator and grams in the denominator. We want grams of H2O in the denominator and moles of H2O in the numerator. And that's the exact inverse of this. So if we have 18 grams per mole, we have 1 over 18 moles per gram. And what is this going to be equal to? What is this going to be equal to? So this cancels out with that. So we're left with 1.647 divided by 18 moles of H2O. Let me scroll over a little bit, get the calculator out, clear it out. And so we have 1.647 divided by 18, which is 0.0915. So let me do this in a new color. We have 0 0.0915 moles of H2O. So so far, we figured out in our, in our products how many moles of carbon dioxide we have and how many moles of water. Now, I said we want to figure out the ratio of hydrogens to carbons or carbons to hydrogens to figure out the empirical formula right here. And to do that, we can say, hey, look, all of the carbons and, and the hydrogens in our products, they all had to come from our mystery hydrocarbon. So if we can figure out the ratio of hydrogens to carbons in our products, we'll know the ratio of hydrogens to carbons in our reactants, because they all had to come from this guy right here. The oxygen obviously had no hydrogens and carbons in it. So all of these hydrogens and carbons came from our mystery substance. So how, how many moles of carbon do we have? 
how many moles of carbon do we have in the carbon dioxide or in in our products well the only product with carbon dioxide the only product with carbon is the carbon dioxide this has no carbon in it so if we have this many carbon dioxides we also have we also have the same number of carbon atoms the same number of carbon atoms moles of atomic carbon and you might say hey wait a mole is that that's just a number this is saying 0.07 times you know 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd times that huge number a mole is just a number very important to remember so this means we have the same number of carbons and if we have that many waters how many hydrogens do we have well for every for every water molecule we have two hydrogens so we're going to have twice as many hydrogen atoms so let's multiply that times 2 So times two is equal to 0.183, 0.183. So we have zero, zero point one eight three. I could even put a trailing zero if we, because we actually had. Well, I think I lost a significant digit here. I could have put a zero right there. But anyway, I don't worry too much about that. Zero point one eight three moles. moles of atomic hydrogen because for every water molecule we have two hydrogens so i just took this number and multiplied by 2 and now let's figure out the ratio of hydrogens to carbons and that's pretty easy we just take the ratio of that to that so the ratio of hydrogens to carbons is 0.183 moles of hydrogen in our product for every 0.07834 moles of carbon in our product and somehow we have to make this into uh, some type of a whole number ratio let's see what kind of whether we can do anything here let's just divide this right here and see what we get so if we just take well we have the 0.183 there so let's divide it by 0.07834 and you get 2.33 oh 2.336 so this is this is approximately equal to I'll do a new color this is approximately equal to 2.336 moles of hydrogen for every for every 1 mole of carbon. And this doesn't look like that neat of a ratio, but this is pretty close to 1/3. So let maybe if we multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1/3 by 3, what do we get? Well, 3 times 2 is 6 and 3 times 1/3 is another 1. So this will be 7 7 moles of hydrogen. I'm approximating it. I, I'm trying to get to some reasonable whole number. 7 moles of hydrogen for every for every 3 moles of carbon. And this was a little bit of an art to it. I said, "Okay, 2.33 to 1 or 2.336 to 1." Well, gee, it just looks like over here, this part of it, it looks like if we multiplied that by 3, we're going to get pretty close to a whole number. So let me multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3. That's kind of the art there to recognize what do you have to multiply this to turn it into a whole number. And if you don't believe me, we could take that number and multiply it by 3. and you get something very 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 close to 7. So that's that's enough for me. So you multiply them both by 3, you get 7 moles of hydrogen for every 3 moles of carbon, and we've figured out our empirical formula. We have 7 hydrogens for every 3 carbons. Right? If we have 7 moles for every 3 moles, that means we have 7 hydrogens for every 3 carbons. And so the empirical formula of our mystery hydrocarbon, so empirical formula is for every 3 carbons we have we have 7 hydrogens now the next thing we want to figure out is the exact molecular formula the exact number of this is just the minimum ratio but maybe we have you know 9 carbons for every 21 hydrogens we don't know so let's use the other information they gave us in the problem where they told us that the molar mass The molar mass is 86.2 grams per mole. This this information right here. This information right here. Let me copy that. 86.2. That looks like an 80, but we'll remember it's, it says 86.2. So let me paste it 
over over here. That's what they gave us in the problem. So just for kicks, just for kicks, what would be the molar mass if this was the molecular formula? So as it's written, as it's written right now, well, there's a couple of ways we could do it algebraically and all of that. But the simplest way is to say, as it's written right now, what would be the what would be the molecular mass of this? Well, it would be, or the molar mass, I should say. So it would be three times twelve, three times twelve plus seven times one. Three times twelve is thirty-six plus seven is equal to forty-three. So the, if this was the molecular formula, its molecular mass would be 43 grams per mole. But they tell us in the problem, they tell us in the problem that the molecular mass is 86 grams per mole. So they're saying that the mass is twice as much as this. We must have twice as many atoms in the same ratio. So the molecular, the molecular formula for this, we're in the home stretch now. The molecular, the molecular formula must have twice as many atoms in the exact same ratios. So it must be C3H7 times 2. Or we could write that as C6C6H14. So we have this is still a ratio of 7 of 14 to 6, which is 7 to 3. But using this information, we were able to figure out the exact number of carbons and the exact number of hydrogens in this molecule. Anyway, hopefully you found that fun.